Hello everyone, I'm Xiang Yu from Michigan State University. Thanks for attending this talk about user simulation via supervised generative adversarial network. This is a joint work with York University and Baidu. So with the recent development of reinforcement learning, there are more and more reinforcement learning based recommendation models. So basically they treat the recommendation procedure as a sequential interaction between users and the system. And in each interaction, the system will recommend a set of items to the user, and then the user will browse these items and provide real-time feedback. He can click, he can purchase, and so on. And the recommend system will update its policy according to the feedback, and then recommend a new set of items, and so on, until the user terminates this session. So why we want to introduce reinforcement learning for recommendations? It mainly has two advantages. So first, the recommendation policy will be updated continuously according to the user's real-time feedback. For example, if you purchase an item, we will give a positive reward to the system. The system will reinforce this kind of recommendation policy. But if you skip the items, we will have a negative reward. So basically, the system try to avoid this kind of recommendation policy. So this is one advantage of reinforcement learning for recommendations. And the second advantage is actually when we use reinforcement learning, we consider more about the long-term reward. So for example, we recommend a Samsung to you. Probably you will buy it and you will stop this session. There is no falling up. But if we recommend an iPhone to you, you will also buy the case by the charger in this session. So when we use reinforcement learning, Basically, we try to maximize this kind of long-term reward from users. So as I just mentioned, reinforcement learning-based recommendation models are highly depends on users' real-time feedback. So the most practical way is online A-B test. So in this way, a new recommendation algorithm is trained based on users' real-time feedback, and then its performance is compared with the current recommendation model working online. So however, we think online A-B test is inefficient and expensive. So there are three reasons. First, it usually takes several weeks to collect sufficient data. And the second reason is actually a lot of engineering efforts are necessary to deploy the new algorithm online. And finally, online A-B tests often lead to bad user appearance because when we deploy a new model online, its parameters are randomly initialized. So because of these reasons, we cannot quickly train and test a new RL-based recommendation model by online A-B test. So in this work, we build a user simulator based on user's historical data. It can generate real-time feedback like real users. And then we can use this generated feedback to pre-train and evaluate the new recommendation algorithm before we launch them online. So however, simulating users' real-time feedback is a challenging task. This is actually the underlying distribution of item sequence is quite complex in the historical data. This is because the large amount of items in the practical recommended systems. And the second challenge is actually to learn a robust simulator. We need a lot of historical data for each user. But in the real-world system, the data available to each user is usually limited. To tackle these two challenges, we propose a user simulator upon the GAN framework. Here, the generator aims to learn the item distribution from the user's historical data, and then generate fake items that are similar to the real ones. And the discriminator wants to distinguish real and fake items, and at the same time, it aims to predict the type of user's real-time feedback on the items. And in the following, I will introduce the architecture of the generator and the discriminator. So here is the structure of the generator. It contains two parts. One is the encoder. So basically, we input the previous items we have browsed, and we output the embedding of the current user's preference. And for the decoder, we input the user's preference, and we will predict the next item to be recommended. So that's the two parts of the generator. I will introduce layer by layer. The input of the encoder are the information of item sequence we have browsed. So for each item, we have its identifier, which is unique for each item. And uh, we also have user's feedback, because we want to capture user's interest 
in the sequence. So then we transform this information into embeddings and we concatenate these two embeddings as the item embedding as a whole. Next, we use a GRU layer to capture users' dynamic preference from the sequence of items. And finally, the encoder will output the embedding of users' current preference. That's the architecture of the encoder. For the decoder, it aims to predict the item that will be recommended according to the user's current preference. So we will input the embedding of user's preference, and the output is the embedding of the next item we want to recommend. So now we have introduced all details of the generator. So for the discriminator, it aims to distinguish real and fake items, and at the same time, it wants to predict the type of user's real-time feedback of a given items. So we consider this as a classification problem, and for the real items from historical data, we have k types of feedback, such as the click and the purchase, and for the fake items, we also have such k types. So in total, we have two k types of feedback, and we use softmax function to calculate the probabilities. And that's all for the architecture of our framework. Next, I will introduce the optimization. To optimize the discriminator, we have supervised and unsupervised losses. The unsupervised loss is similar to a classical gun models. It aims to distinguish real and fake items. So here, the probabilities of an item is classified as real. It's the summation of the probabilities of k real feedback. They are in red color in the figure. And it's similar for the fake items in the orange color. And then the unsupervised loss is compute like the standard GAN model. So besides the unsupervised loss, we also have supervised loss. It aims to predict the types of user's real-time feedback. So here we consider it as a classification problem and use cross-entropy loss to minimize the difference between the user's ground truth feedback and the predictions. So here we apply cross-entropy loss to real and fake feedback separately. And finally, the all or loss function of the discriminator is the weighted sum of the supervised and the unsupervised part. Okay, this is the loss of discriminator. For the generator, we also have the supervised and the unsupervised parts. The unsupervised loss is similar to a classic GAN model. It minimizes the probabilities that a generated item is classified as the fake item. And the supervised loss aims to minimize the distance between the real item from data and the generated item from generator. This can help to generate the items that are close to the real ones. And finally, the all-or loss function of the generator is a weighted sum of the supervised and the unsupervised parts. This is the loss function of the generator. And then, to optimize the whole framework, we can alternately update the loss of discriminator and the generator. So this is about the optimization. Next, I will introduce the requirements. All requirements are based on two public datasets from Netflix and GD.com. And for each recommendation session, we use the first 70% as the training validation set and the last 30% as the test set. In our requirement, we define four types of feedback. For example, the real positive means user will give positive feedback to the real item. And we use F1 score to evaluate our model. Here, a higher F1 score means a better performance. And we compare our model with several user simulators, and most of them are proposed for the RL-based recommendation models. And we can find that our model performed better than all simulators with a significant margin. So this is because our generator can learn the item distribution from user's historical data and then generate fake items that are similar to real ones. And these fake items can enrich the real item space. And our discriminator not only can distinguish real and fake items, but also it can predict user's real-time feedback. So this result validates the effectiveness of our model in simulating user's real-time feedback. We also study the performance of a training reinforcement learning recommender system based on our simulator, and we use the reward of a session as a metric to evaluate the model training. We have two baselines. One is directly training a reinforcement learning recommender system based on the historical data. Another is training the system upon iRecGAN. It is the best baseline in previous requirements. We find that our model converts to similar reward 
which is the one upon historical data, and our model is more stable than the model upon Iraq gun. So this operation means that all model can take place of the real users to train RL-based recommender systems. Someone may ask if we can directly train a recommender system based on historical data, why we need a simulator. So this is because some on-policy RL models, such as SASA, they cannot be directly trained upon the historical data. So a simulator is necessary to train these on-policy RL models before we launch them online. Okay, to conclude, in this paper, we propose a novel user simulator based on GAN framework. It can generate real-time feedback like real users, and we can use it to pre-train and test IL recommendation models. Our work is supported by NSF grants and the Triple W Student Scholarship Award. For more details of the work, please to refer to our paper. Thanks for listening.